Sure. So I'm Meg Aris, and uh, my business is actually my name, my full name, Megan Aris. You can find me at MeganAris.com, and all of my links to all of my places where I show up is on there. Nice. Very cool. Uh, and what do you do, like, in all of your, like, mm -hmm. your hustles, I guess, for lack of a better word? Yeah. So I feel like this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of like a longer conversation. What do I do? Yes. Um, you know, I've been teaching for 15 years now, okay. all, almost 16. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's been it's been a kind of radical journey. And so with that, um, what I do is has become a compilation of many years of experience. Very and cool. so I have two comprehensive Pilates um, certificates. Uh, I have several different yoga certificates. I've taught teacher trainings throughout Canada and um, for yoga or for Pilates. For both. For actually. both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just and um, just recently, I've kind of been uh, suspended or or like temporarily laid off from the school that I teach Pilates with okay. uh, in Vancouver um, with COVID and everything. Yes. So, yeah, so that's taken a little bit of a hiatus, but, um, you know, I do a lot of one-on-one of -on -one, uh, mm -hmm. teaching right now in person, okay. and and then I've got my Zoom classes, and I've got some online workshops that I'm running right now, too. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it sounds like this, you're just busy. <laughs> I'm like, busy. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good, though. I mean... I, Honestly, this time, um, I've been thriving. Something kind of mm. magical happened in my alignment of actually bringing myself into an online state. Um, I, you know, I'm pretty quiet over here. I don't make a lot of noise. And uh, in January, I finally made my own website and um, launched this 10-month program. Okay. And yeah, it was always like, okay, we're doing all the things. And yeah, then, yeah. of course, lockdown happened. And um, I just felt so grateful that I'd already made this uh, huge the infrastructure push. already. Yeah. So yeah. I was able within like 48 hours to switch everything online. And amazing. I retained probably like 70% of my clientele. And it was yeah. amazing. It was amazing. And I've just been yeah. thriving. And I, I'm kind of like, I feel a little guilty. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but it's, yes. It, you know, I think yeah. uh, yeah. just sharing that outward, you know, taking, mm -hmm. taking the gift that I've been given and, and giving it back. I've I said it I think maybe last week it's almost like survivor guilt yeah. when you are like you're thriving and just doing great in this time when you know people are sick and people's businesses are closing down and stuff and you're like couldn't have been better like right. you know like um, there's that sense that uh, we want to kind of like I want to muzzle the success that we're having in this time. Mm -hmm because you want to be sensitive to those who are struggling, right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, how I kind of approached it um, with the pivot to online was just like being really honest with, with people and saying like, hey, if you're in need, if you're struggling, reach out, tell yes. me like, this is what I'm doing, but that doesn't mean I don't have space to make something else work for you. Or, yes, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find Pilates? <laughs> um, how much time do we have? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, for me, I I have a background in in yoga. Um, as a child, okay. I uh, I was sick as a child, and I was a uh, dancer, mm -hmm. and I was no longer able to dance. And my mom took me to a yoga class. When I was 13 or something like that 14 maybe okay. and um before it was popular <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh and through that that i had really learned about mindful movement breath and movement mm -hmm. um and i practiced throughout um my my young teenage years and into my early 20s um and then i moved out to guelph followed That's... a guy <laughs> <laughs> Guelph is and, near me. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, and, and you know, if you know anything about West Coast kids, you know that when you put them in Ontario, they, yes. they shrivel and wither. And like, ah! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so I was, I was 
searching. I was searching for community. I was searching for something different because I, I just, uh, I really felt like I didn't know where I belonged. And yeah. um, my partner at the time was uh, going to the University of Guelph. So I discovered that they had Pilates classes at the university that anybody could take. So yes. I went and it was in this giant gymnasium and um, there were tons of people in the class and I loved it. I just thought, wow, this is, this is something different. Like I'm going somewhere that my yoga practice hasn't taken me. Yes. And so after, I think it was like an eight week class or something after that, um, the woman who led the class, her name is Jillian, uh, she, she said, you know, for anyone who is interested, I also run small classes out of my home. So oh, I went, I, yeah. I took her up on it and I didn't practice very long with her before I ejected from Ontario. No, I ejected. <laughs> <laughs> I came back to the West Coast. Um, mm. And when I came back, I moved over to Vancouver and spent a little bit of time trying to research where I wanted to do um, Pilates teacher training. I was really invested in it. And Amazing. Yeah. at this point, I hadn't actually done yoga teacher training certification. For me, as a you know young 20 year old, I felt like it was too big. It was too much to hold to actually teach um, a spiritual practice. Yes. And so there was no way I was going to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's so funny I, i'll let you continue the story but mm. i think it's fascinating how you had such a reverence for the how vast yoga is where it's been so commercialized that you can do it in a weekend or you can do like an online and not to diminish those but like it there's so funny how we've boxed it in so people can so it's palatable but you had such a reverence of how wide and how broad it was that you're like i'm not ready for this yet Mm -hmm. it's fascinating yeah yeah it was I mean I think partly too I was um, studying anthropology in university and um, uh, yeah there was something about like just feeling like I was stealing in a way like mm. taking taking something from a different culture and that didn't feel authentic to me co-opting um, is the term yeah yeah that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> phrases these days right yeah, <laughs> exactly yes and and um, so I, I ended up doing my Pilates teacher training through the Physical Mind Institute, okay. um, which is, uh, it's a full comprehensive training, but they, they start with it kind of broken into smaller pieces, which for me, I didn't have any money. I had no money and having this broken into uh, like, oh, you could start with just a little mat training and then you know start teaching a little bit from there. Yes. Um, I was in the right place at the right time when I Amazing. walked into the studio that I was in. They needed somebody to help at the front desk, and I was like, pick me, pick me. <laughs> and uh, so helping at the front desk got me in the front door. I started teaching and um, almost right away got into doing the equipment training and and then started to kind of build the, the bigger picture with all of yeah. that. Um, but it was really interesting where I was like, as soon as I started teaching, particularly math classes, it was it was so obvious to me that uh, my yoga background could not be hidden. It could not be disguised. It just came through in the way that yes. I taught. Yeah. yeah. And so I realized that um, it, it would be who me to go and actually uh, get the certification. Yes. For... It needed expression. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I it did, was coming out actually, anyways. It was coming out anyways. So I was like, yes. okay, I, I feel like I probably should have some credentials for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's so funny now looking back, like, ah, oh, I think I was so confident as a as a new teacher, which is not the norm, I don't think. But no, I right. just I just really didn't know what I didn't know. So I was um, <laughs> teaching, you That's know, so really contemporary kind of Pilates yoga, this thing that was just my own. And I, I, I felt great about it. I had no uh, other dialogue telling me that that like, yes, might it, be yeah. no one's ever or something. Yeah. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> That's, uh, if you get a chance to listen to uh, Dracina's uh, conversation from yesterday, we touched yeah. on that. And uh, it's so funny how um, when you're not encumbered by all these other thoughts and policing narratives, you can just move so freely. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, I think that's why I changed my business card from personal trainer to movement specialist. So it's Pilates, it's, it's sport conditioning, it's this, it's that, the other, we, but it's all movement. We could just celebrate and help people with movement. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so good. Totally. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I ended up doing that training, like a, a comprehensive yoga training and several others on top of that and was sort of tag teaming both trainings intermittently. Like I would say I go through a couple of years where I was really invested in one part of my practice and then yep. yeah I nothing wrong with that of, yeah, yeah yeah and I, I felt like that gave me um some some depth with my practice and depth then uh yeah. and I'm probably, I guess it's almost um, it's nine years ago my brother um contacted me and he's like Meg I'm opening up this this multidisciplinary space here in Victoria I want you to come and teach you'll have like your own space you can do your own thing what do you think and wow. it was it was actually a really challenging decision for me because at the time I was um I had a full roster of students I wasn't really taking any new students mm. I was um teaching part of a yoga teacher training teaching Pilates teacher training and thinking about like oh pick up and leave hmm. yeah but and this opportunity to work with my brother and like yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want Amazing. my own space. Like, of yes. course. Yeah. So, so uh, Jump Ship came over to Victoria again, which is where I grew up, yeah. and um, and kind of started from scratch. It was it was challenging, really challenging. Oh wow. yeah, it's exciting hey. though. There's no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, that's well. That's exciting. Those opportunities, you gotta just jump sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it was hard. And honestly, like the first little bit, I thought it was a mistake. I thought I made the wrong choice. Really? Um, oh, yeah. I was like pfft, totally flat out. Like I didn't have clientele. People didn't. Like Victoria doesn't have a lot of Pilates. Mm -hmm. um, it's grown. It's grown now. But, yeah. it, it, you know, when I first came over, there was maybe two other studios. And um, I was just flatlining. I was like, I don't know what I'm wow. doing here. Um, and I didn't have community. I didn't have other teachers that I knew. Yes. Um, so I really, I really leaned into my my yoga practice and and kind of hung out with the with the yoga kids for a while. Okay. Um, and then eventually um, we hired another woman to come and teach Pilates with me. Uh, I started to get you know enough traction that we needed more bodies. And um, and this woman came in and she was teaching. A little differently than me like there was something that she had that I was like I kind of want that I don't know what that is but I kind of want that <laughs> right <laughs> and um and she had trained through Boulder and um mm. yeah like through through one of the satellite schools of, of the Boulder training okay um, and so I went and sat in on a lecture and honestly after the first day I was like oh shoot okay here we go I gotta do the whole thing all <laughs> yes. over again <laughs> yeah yeah but it was great it was great and and actually after I um graduated from the program um they asked me if I would come on and and help help coach part of the amazing program. yeah yeah now, going back to that moment when you're like, this was a total mistake, mm -hmm. leaving my client base, my roster and moving over, you're, we, we want to talk about like self-attendance and mm -hmm. self-care and all those different things. Like, what were the messages that you're sending, like you're telling yourself so that you didn't just like, I'm just going back, I can get my people mm -hmm. back. Like, how did you stay in oh, how did there? I, stay in? I think, um, kind of, I was afraid to fail. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. I got to do this. I got to figure it out. Um, and to be honest with you, Martin, I wasn't in a great space. I no, I was yeah. teaching, but I was I was kind of broken at the time. Um, there was some other personal stuff going on, and mm -hmm. and I was just in survival mode. And I didn't really recognize that that's what was going on. I just kept going. And yes. fortunately, like at that point. Uh, my autopilot as a teacher was strong enough that I could kind of rely on her to, yes. to teach for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until uh, probably about six years ago, uh, five years ago, five, six years, um, mm -hmm. I started having a little bit of a different conversation. So I mentioned earlier that I was sick as a child. I have yes. an autoimmune disease and um, I was in 
two car accidents kind of back to back. Oh, and yeah, and the first one, and neither of them were particularly bad, but the first one I experienced really bad whiplash right. and it sent my body into a spiral. Well, I was going to say it's trauma, regardless of how big it is. Totally. Trauma is trauma. Totally. Yeah. And that trauma um, triggered a massive flare up for me. Mm. and like nothing I'd ever seen before like way worse than anything I had when I was a child and um and then I was like thinking okay maybe I'm starting to get better and then I got hit again and in that moment like instantly in that moment as the car hit me my body just started shaking and I knew I was like I can't handle it I can't yeah. handle another uh hit at this point yes um, yeah and it just went out of control it, and it was it was rough it was really bad i i was you know like uh, not to get into too much of, of the sad no. sob story but like <laughs> i i could hardly dress myself i couldn't change the springs my my um i have rheumatoid disease so it's like my hands were not working i couldn't hold a water mm. glass with one hand like and i started going oh my gosh i don't know if i'm gonna be able to teach anymore yes uh, and this is when I started to have some ahas, like, I got to make some big changes, big changes and find some help yes. and start to actually look after myself. Like, it was so crazy. At that time, I was so uncomfortable and in so much pain. Right. And yet I would go to the studio every day and yes. teach and just yeah. keep going like this little soldier right. <laughs> thinking like, okay, I got to look after everybody. What am I going to do? I got to yes. look after everybody. Right. And completely bypassing myself and what was actually needed and not yeah. living, not living what I actually was teaching. Such um, a double-edged sword, right? Because, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you can say, I mean, that, that is a solution that they give people, too. It's like, go help other people. Like, in your down times, mm -hmm. there's energy you get from giving back to others. But then the flip side, the dangerous side is what you said there, is where you're not even listening to yourself anymore yeah. while you're doing that. Almost yeah. masking the pain while you're helping others, right? Yeah, absolutely. Which, I mean, was a coping mechanism, and it worked yeah. for a while. Yeah. Right. Um, for a long while, actually. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and then I just realized, like, I, I need to sort some of this uh, trauma out on a deeper level. Yes. Um, and at that point, um, I went and saw a somatic experiencing practitioner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like uh, a... No, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's sort of... Um, uh, it's like almost a type of counseling where there is um, an embodiment component to okay. it. Um, and basically trying to release stored trauma from the body. Yes. And sure. you start with a little bit of talk therapy, but then it, it kind of weaves into a whole bunch of other things. And okay. for me, um, I, I learned that I, I had no idea how to express anger and frustration like I just I'd never really learned that skill <laughs> yeah yeah right um and I, I grew up in a house where that just uh, wasn't wasn't really expressed um mm -hmm. in a positive way and uh so I started actually like having to practice expressing anger <laughs> and, yeah. I, and it, it was really Makes fascinating sense. too yeah right it was yeah. like oh yeah. okay this I just I uh I have a propensity for being a joyful person and that mm -hmm. is my sort of like inherent state and absolutely well you um, get boxed in there too right because now exactly. it's like oh no meg meg's sad today that's after a while like, i'm not allowed to be sad in front of people because they're expecting the happy person to show up yeah yeah, yeah. and it was like i had no idea how to reconcile those things right um so I did a few sessions with, with this um, wonderful being, Seth Lyon, and, and he really helped me kind of get kick-started on this. And then I, uh, his wife has this program, Irene Lyon, if anybody that's interested. Um, yeah, you can she, put it in the she, comment section too, just like, just yeah, if you sure, want to. Look up. Yeah. Sure, I'm a little sideways right now, but okay, I, can, right. I can drop it in there later. <laughs> or um, even on the IG later, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyhow, she had this like 
a longer course and I started doing and working working on my own to, to try to find regulation within my yes. system and right. um and that worked that that worked and got me unstuck and I started to uh feel better and be able to show up and be wow. able to notice um the, the, the signals of yes. when I was going too far too fast or um, right, right, right. kind of blowing past the, the stop signs, you know. What an amazing, like, catalyst. Like, that's that really is a catalyst. I mean, it, down the road, you realize that that is just enough to disrupt the cycle yeah. that a new cycle can begin, right? And uh, we need those things. I've been using that term catalyst a lot lately right. because we start looking for solutions. We, we start looking for just hard answers to our problems. Well, like, maybe sometimes it is just... To, to do one subtle change, just change angle ever so slightly so that the whole trajectory changes down the road, mm -hmm. right? And um, mm -hmm. so why did you choose that somatic approach? I mean, there's so many other modalities that are out there that might have helped. Like, how did you land mm -hmm. on that? Um, I had a, a really good friend who uh, she recommended that I try it out. And to be honest, I went to my first session and I did it and I walked out and I was like, well, that was nice, but I didn't really cute. learn. I didn't really learn anything. Like that, yeah, yeah. that wasn't that wasn't very useful to me. I was like, I was thinking like, I need a freaking earthquake to get out of this. Like, yeah, I need yeah, yeah. something to shake everything up and make a big change because I'm so down. Yes. And uh, then I sort of sat on it. And I went for a hike with a friend, and I was telling her about <laughs> it. And and in the middle of it, I was like, Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Like, he knew exactly what he was doing. Like my little yes. system couldn't handle an earthquake. No, like, I needed these really gentle little things. Yes, and to go slow, to right. go slow, to not uh, over um, exert and create uh, more discord. Mm -hmm. And and so once I kind of like tuned into like, oh yeah, that's right. That's what yes. I need. These like really gentle, super super simple things <laughs> and, um, and then I could start to integrate and that's when it was like oh okay and the things were so simple that it was like immediately I could also integrate them into my teaching too wow uh, just so like cool. getting people to um, and you know James Crater talks about this stuff a lot but like yes. to orient to their surroundings before they start working to right. use yep. their eyes Mm -hmm. to use all of their senses to yes. help them become present um, and kind of get into their own bodies right. um, before we start like giving them instructions or whatever. Right. And, and actually on that same thread, can you talk about self-attendance and what that, what that term means? Yeah. I, I think it's like, what do I need right now? That's, mm -hmm. that's, the question that yes. uh, comes up when I think of self-attendance and it's like figuring that out in the moment um, and it changes depending on what you're doing um, and we don't always have the ability to do what is needed right now in our mm -hmm. self-attendance um, but I think when we take a moment to acknowledge what it is that we need you can almost like put a bookmark in there and be like okay I got to come back to that later yes. because that's not something that needs to just be let go of. Okay, so question yeah. right there, time <laughs> out. So for the person who isn't even aware enough to know what they need, mm -hmm. this is my own personal like pet peeve with people in the, my own past experience. When someone doesn't, when they know what they don't want, uh -huh. but they don't know what they do want, uh -huh. how do you not help them navigate that? Yeah, and I think this is kind of our job as teachers is like, that's what we're there for is to help people to be empowered and to mm -hmm. be able to make those choices um, for themselves to, to find their own power. And that we're just the guides that help them get there. And so for me, it, it looks like asking a lot of questions mm -hmm. um, to, to help them try to figure it out. Sometimes with my students, um, like, well, like when we're in a practice, I'm like, well, what do you need now? What comes next? And yes. um, they're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, okay, well, like maybe just do like a little check-in with your body. Is there Quick somewhere stand. that's like, like talking to you that wants an, wants attention? Mm -hmm. Maybe that brings something up. Maybe not. Maybe um, it's like, 
what kind of shape do you want to make right now? What like what yeah, would it feel like questions. to do a side bend or to bend forward or backwards? And they might not know what the exercise is that they need. They mm-hmm. might just kind of have like an idea, a general idea of like, I feel like I need to to you know bend forward. Yes. And right. then that's like, oh, okay, I have this entire catalog of ways <laughs> right. that we can do that with you. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> that happened to me yesterday, come to think of it. We're doing a lot of, um, like, you know, maybe it was your, your ab series of five or something. Mm-hmm. And the lady's like, I just need to go into this, like, down, like, uh, like a child's pose. I just need to go here for a moment. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, do you feel like you need more of that? Because like you said, I have this whole catalog of exercises where we can go into flexion instead of that extension, or we can go into a rotation of your body, whatever it is. And it's almost like we're letting them guide the process. Yeah. Right. And like you said, just taking ownership of the process and being present enough to know what their body needs in that moment. Yeah. And when they don't know, it's like you have to start um, teaching them how to, how to be in their driver's seat. And that yes. to me is like asking, what does that feel like? Mm-hmm. What does that yes. feel like? Right. So that they start to build their own catalog of movement. Yeah. Where they're like, oh, exactly. when I do that movement, this is what I feel. Right. You know? And I'm um, oh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's okay. I was just going to add on like one of the questions that I often ask my students too is like, what, what do you want to feel like at the end of our session? What do you want to feel like when you walk out the door? Yes. And maybe that's an easier question for them. They might just be like, I want to feel strong. I'm like, okay. I can help you do that. Right. I'm going to play with that question Mm -hmm. a little bit with my clients. Like, what do you want to feel like at the end? That's a fantastic question because they may say, I just need to let let out some aggression. I just want to sweat today. Or like, I just need to, I'm just, it took me everything just to get here. So if we can just make it real slow today, that'd be wonderful. Like, you know what I mean? Like wherever they're at, like they determine it. Uh, It's funny that that comment takes away my last question. (laughs) (laughs) Because <laughs> I was going to ask you, ask you, what do you do when you're trying to find that balance between what the person needs, what they say, mm-hmm. and where they said they want to go? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you start your your 10 sessions with them or your, your dialogue with them, and they're like, I want to get fitter. I want to get stronger. I want to do this, whatever. And then every time they show up, you ask them how they feel today, and they say, I just want to stretch. It's like, well, we're never going to get you stronger if every single day is a stretch day. So, like, how do we reconcile getting them where we want them to go and what they tell you in that moment? Yeah, sneaky ninja skills, Martin. Sneaky ninja <laughs> skills. <laughs> Put that in the comment section, somebody. <laughs> That's our workshop right? next to be running. Sneaky ninja skills 101. Like, oh, we're this stretching weekend. here, but actually, are we stretching? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I'm, I, that's Pilates right there. Yep. It's like sneaky ninja skills to actually get strong <laughs> while you get to your end range of motion, too. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's, that's part of it, right? right? And then the other piece is also, like, taking the temperature throughout the session. Like, yes. where are you at now? What do you right. need now? What's right. changed from, you know, 20 minutes ago? Has mm-hmm. anything changed? If it hasn't, then we need to keep... Uh, searching and discovering yeah. yeah it's so funny we're putting labels on things of experience with people this week where uh in that same situation where it's a nice kind of stretchy thing i snuck in a couple really really tough exercises and they're like oh martin that was so hard i was like oh yeah i know do you want to keep going with that or one just she's like no give me something else i'm like okay let's go right like yeah. they didn't even know what they needed sometimes so sometimes yes. we have to be confident as instructors and not be afraid of rejection because we can do throw something out there and be like that was wrong I didn't need that and we need to be able to still have enough you know like that resilience within ourselves to be like okay let's just pivot let's go here and be like oh I'm such a terrible teacher let's just like just stay in child's pose for the rest of the time so I don't hurt your feelings here right like, <laughs> we can be in that place too of our own capacity to handle you know the responses from people as well that's another element of that absolutely yeah and I mean for me I think it really boils down to like helping somebody feel safe to go into unknown territory and if we're not in our own this is where we kind of come back to the beginning of the conversation if we're not in our own self-attendance to be able to have our student um co-regulate with us yes then they are not going to feel safe to uh be brave enough to do um you know 
I, I don't know. <laughs> like, whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever yeah. the movement is, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and if if we can can you know, like you say, um, shake something off, like oh, that didn't work. Oh well, so let's move on, and, <laughs> and and still be present and hold space for them to have mm-hmm. their experience. Uh, then maybe there's an opportunity to to create change. Right. Yeah. And like you said, to give them uh, something they didn't know they needed. Because right. usually we do. Like, I really think that if you decided to become a movement teacher, part of the reason that you did that is that you uh, have a, a certain level of intuition around what people need. Like, you yes. want to help them. And right. uh, you might not have spent time developing that skill, but I think that it's is is something that is inherent when you decide to become a teacher and if it's not it usually like i find um like students that are going through teacher training if they get to that point where they're like oh actually i don't want to be a teacher yes and that's okay right that's a great moment too Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah that's Mm -hmm. a very good moment and it's not a failure moment either no no, not at all. I actually yeah. had a, a wonderful student, Ashley. She uh, she just graduated from the teacher training program, and she actually went into it to um, for personal reasons. Like she didn't want to become a teacher. She was just okay. really interested in her own self betterment, yes. and it was like the exact opposite thing happened. She started doing the teaching, and all of a sudden, this confidence started building, yes. and she realized like oh, I love this. Yes. I love doing this with people. I love right. sharing with them. It gets yeah. me out of my head. It gets me out of my stories. And uh, right. it's been really, really beautiful watching her. Oh, for sure. You want to share that joy, right? You want to share that freedom that you just found. Mm-hmm. Totally. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So if I was to ask you who your ideal client was, we've talked um, about all these wonderful, curious moments that people are finding who is that person if they walked into your studio you would be like i will train you for free the yeah. rest of your life because i just love this about you yeah absolutely i actually teach that student oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice yes. how good yes. a treat is that eh? yeah i know well you know i think like when you spend time thinking about who that student is you start bringing them in and of course i feel yeah. like I've, I've actually got several of those students um yeah. And what, for me, like the number one thing is you have to be willing to collaborate. Okay. I'm not doing this to you. Yes. Yeah. And nice. if that's, if you're not on board with that, I'm not your teacher. You don't play. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> and no, because it's that's not wild. worth, it's not worth my time. Like, right. honestly, um, like, and just, I don't mean to be mean about it. No, I'm just, like, I'm just laughing, though, man. Cause I mean, you're like, you're just warm and flowy and gentle <laughs> until you hit that and you're like, no like this is <laughs> and like that it, because for me it's like uh that is so depleting that is so yes. depleting to work with someone who isn't there um collaborating with me right. who isn't willing to have those conversations and answer yeah. the questions that i'm asking them but you know there's people ha- that have a real amazing skill set at working with those people like i call those my court ordered exercisers Right. Like the, those people that they've gone to their doctor and their doctor said, listen, you are 47 and your dad died at 48. So find yourself a gym. And yeah. then they're, they're there, arms crossed. And they're not in that process of collaborating, yeah. but they have to be there. I know some trainers and some plus people who are amazing at working with that population. So it's not our calling. No, no. But, but you know what? Well, I actually like, um, and I'm not saying that I'm not willing to do like a little bit of work for that either, because yeah. like you said, when it's a new student, if they show up and maybe they are like this, I'm like, my personal goal is to win them over, but yes. I'm not tap dancing for it. You know, I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's like, no I'm going to win them over. No, uh, you know, it's like, I'm just going to show up and share what I do. And if yes. they are like, by the end of the session, they're like, hmm, I think maybe, oh yeah. Actually, yeah. I kind of like this. Yes. Um, you know, then there's room. Then there's room. And that's actually them showing me that there might be an opportunity mm-hmm. for collaboration. But that, again, comes back to those ninja skills of kind of like, oh, they've <laughs> got their arms crossed and and they're not coming in to have like, 
like an ohm moment. No, they the coming like, to like an, an get impress their ass me moment. Kicked or yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. walk in and like impress me with this. Like prove yeah. to me I need to be here. Yeah, and I mean, like I'm on board for that too. But then there has to be a, a line where it's like, okay, we go deeper. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so right. when you ask me, like, who is my ideal student, mm -hmm. that student is someone who wants to go deeper, who wants to um, uh, have have an experience and be able to take that with them. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's in, in the state of curiosity, <clears throat> you know, that they care enough. Yes. And I actually learned something. Sorry, I got a little tickle. <clears throat> I, I can talk while you're the other day. That's <laughs> no, okay. Okay. So, um, why is there now? Um, so excited, like, ah. <laughs> I know. Well, Randy, Randy uh, from Rooted Pilates, when I asked her that same question about, mm. you know, who your ideal person is, she still to this day has like my favorite answer. And she simply mm. says, somebody who is curious and courageous. Yes. Yes. And here's what I was going to share is that I mm. learned that the word curious actually um the etymology of it is that it comes from the word care yes yeah and so to be curious means you care so mm -hmm. that means you're you're interested you're interested in in learning something yes. and um to me that's that's the number one thing that's required is that they they care enough that they care about their body that they care about um creating change mm -hmm. and learning something about themselves and yes. um, taking that out into the world Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, I did have a question for you based on one of your posts. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh -oh. I'm going I'm to set it up with a story from my son. My 14-year-old and I are in the car, and he's just really stressed about a bunch of different things. And as we were talking, and he was saying, like, this and then this and this and this, I put my hand on his thigh, and I simply said, you know, you can cry. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like the faucet just turned on mm -hmm. at that moment. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about when I was reading your post where you said, uh, it was Oops. Or an award. And they said, I don't want to get emotional, but. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I cut out there for a second, so I oh, missed yeah. part of what you said. But oh, sorry, no, um, I actually, I paused. I got a phone call come in, so I had to oh, just, okay, like, okay. Um, but yeah, but it was just that comment about like I don't want to get emotional. Yeah, I don't want to get emotional, but yeah, yes. it's really interesting to me that um, that that kind of dialogue of like that it's almost like the word emotion in that mm -hmm. context is equated with crying. Yes. And to me, um, and this is what I wrote about in that post, is that um, the word emotion, it, it's a whole range of spectrums. And when we say we don't get emotional, that negates our, our joy, our grief, our mm -hmm. anger, and like the full wheel spectrum of emotions that we can yes. experience. And, um, and I think it's really important, like I said earlier, like you, <laughs> to actually learn how to express your emotions and do it in a way that um, it's not going to cause harm to to other other people. Right, 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 right. And I in in reading that when I hear emotional, I I equate it with weakness. Right. Because, you know, as opposed to crying, because I mean, I can cry if I take a bullet wound, it grazes me, and I cry. It's like, well, he's crying because he just took a bullet. That's pretty cool. I'd cry at that point. Right. But that's not weakness. Right. There's a like the emotional weakness part to it. It's like yeah. I don't want to show weakness. I don't want to show yeah. vulnerability. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. like some of what I heard in there. It's like I, I think we need to be able to show vulnerability, it, whatever the reason is. Absolutely. I mean, true vulnerability is really uh, our greatest strength. Actually, like, yes. that's how we are brave is when we're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and like Brene Brown talks about this all the time, right? <laughs> Where it's just like that's it. It's like they're they're basically the same thing vulnerability yes. is bravery and yes. um so getting emotional or showing weakness mm -hmm. that's that's actually um when, when we start unleashing our our true selves really yes yeah. yeah um don't you love how there's nine minutes left and we talked about plotties for like three seconds this okay. whole conversation <laughs> Well, 
that's what happens, right? That's what happens. That's how yeah. it goes. So yeah. funny. No, but I mean, like, I love Pilates. I, um, I'm, uh... <laughs> we don't have to now. It's all good. No, but we can. <laughs> we can. Okay. Because honestly, it's like, I think what, what I would want um, people to take away from this conversation is that this is actually a conversation that you can have while doing Pilates. It's like, you don't have to separate yourself. And I'm not saying like, step outside the lines. Like, it, I'm not a counselor. I'm not trained in that. But I'm a human being. Mm-hmm. And I can see other human beings. And if I see you, then I can't um, not acknowledge you if I yes. see you. Yes. Well said. Yeah, absolutely. One of your comments and your kind of main message was just show up. And as much as we didn't actually use that phraseology, that's what we just talked about for the last 50 minutes is showing up, being aware, being attentive to ourselves and those around us. Um, and I, I love that. I've been really musing on that phrase and what that means through my skin tone, through our mental health, like on so many different levels, we need to be able to just show up and be, be welcoming, be aware, all that good stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Martin. And I don't know, like, and I think as a teacher, one of the things that <clears throat> in the early days I was taught was that like you just table how you're feeling that day and you show up for your students. And that is not always true. You know, like if you're having a bad day, there's ways of dealing with that Mm -hmm. so that you can show up and still um, be in attendance for yourself. Yes. It sounds like you've done both, right? There's days where we, you know, and we all have where we'll be the martyr for the sake of our paying client. Sure. Um, and then, you know, the flip side is just really being present yeah. uh, and being real. And that, that authenticity keeps them coming back as well. Totally. Totally. And sometimes that means like going in the bathroom in between the clients and like screaming in the mirror. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely done that before. <laughs> right. So good. <laughs> well, I really appreciate your time today. And that was such a quick 50 minutes. Um, it really was. <laughs> so good, man. Yeah. Thank you for asking me to be um, here, Martin. I love, like, having a chat with another Canadian about the life. I know, right? Oh, yes. Our, our community is growing. It's so great. It, it is. A uh, little secret between you and I. My Canadian guests have been all super epic martin kara isadora like you guys are so like every time i have these conversations i feel like okay i need to make this a podcast this week okay i'm gonna just cut someone else out and put this one in first (laughs) because it's so rich they're so rich you know so love it love it something about like being dark and in the north it's like oh there's some good good material here (laughs) there's some good material up here (laughs) <laughs> anyways all right thank you so much i'm gonna sign you off and say my thank final you, my goodbyes friend. here okay take care thanks bye